Sometimes the simplest question is the most difficult to answer. The question here is, what is dance therapy? The difficulty is in describing it to you in a short period of time. But I'm going to try because one of my most favorite things to discuss is the use of dance as therapy. Now, James Brown, the legendary musician, had some very sage advice for us. He said that the one thing that can solve most of our problems is dancing. Well, people throughout the ages have understood exactly the power of dance for individuals, for groups, for communities, in helping people understand exactly what was going on in their lives. Because movement is a basic form of communication. In fact, movement is our first form of communication. And in dance, the movement that's inherent provides us with opportunities for socialization, for building community, for developing the vitality within us, and most importantly, for expressing our innermost thoughts and feelings. The body reflects personality. Movement does not lie. So let's think about this for a moment. Think about walking down the street and you see somebody with a decrepit body moving very slowly. And you look at that person without even talking to them and you think, something's probably going on in that person's life. Or you yourself might be walking down the street and feeling really exuberant and happy and you're smiling. And what's happening with your smile is that it's infectious and people are looking at you and they're smiling with you. They don't have to say a word because they see in the shape of your body, in the rhythm of your movement, that something is happening inside of you. Well, that's what the dance therapist does. The dance therapist looks at the shape of the body. They look at the rhythm of the body. And they understand that when connecting with clients, that through their dance, clients reveal the, their innermost life, that the voice of their life comes out. So let me give you a, I'd say an official definition of dance therapy. It is the psychotherapeutic use of movement that furthers the emotional, the cognitive, the physical, and the social integration of the individual. So let's see how that works for you. I'd like you all in the audience to think about a gesture, a gesture that reveals how you feel in this moment. So if you were me, your gesture might look a little bit like this, because I'm a little anxious, a little nervous, and really happy to be here. Your gesture might be a little bit smoother than mine. But everybody, just think of a gesture and make it right now. Glorious. Now, would you please turn to somebody who's sitting next to you, two of you, three of you, doesn't matter, just make sure that everybody's involved, and make that same gesture to the person near you. Go. Now, did your gesture change? Did it stay the same? Was it any different? The dance therapist would actually, if this was a dance therapy session, might ask you to take that gesture a little bit deeper. Or to think about the feeling that evoked that gesture. And in, in, in that feeling, that let's explore that a little bit more. So you might ask, how did we know how to do this? Well, there, are, there were pioneers in dance therapy scattered throughout the United States. They were dancers, they were choreographers, and they were dance teachers. They taught a lot of classes. People walked into their classes, and they often felt one way, and then they would walk out and they would feel another. And what these dance therapists, who were all, by the way, had extensive dance training and psychological knowledge, they all understood the power of dance to energize. And they understood in watching their clients and their students that the holistic view of the individual had to encompass the mind and the body. From their collective wisdom, the field was born. So today, there are dance therapists all over the United States, actually all over the world, who have extensive dance training and extensive psychological knowledge. They work with people who are um, people of all ages, they work with people of all races, creeds, colors, cultures. They work in inpatient facilities and outpatient facilities with psychiatric patients. They work in medical facilities, nursing homes, schools, daycare centers. They work with a range of clients 
who all are in need of expression and help. So there are many different goals that these dance therapists all over the world are working with, and they're fairly generic. There are goals there about body awareness, goals about developing awareness of an inner sensation. There are goals that have to do with overcoming isolation. Many of our clients are alienated from society, and when we're connecting them with others, they have more of a social feeling, and they can develop more of their life force and their energy. So it doesn't matter whether these are generic goals, because every dance therapy session is a little bit different. You might work differently with children than you would work with geriatrics. You might very work very well, um, very differently with people just like you and me in private, when dance therapists are working in private practice than you'd be working with an inpatient psychiatric client. But regardless of who you're working with, what is very present is that the dance therapist does not use prescribed movement. This is not like a dance class. This is a situation in which a dance therapist will encourage clients to do any movements that comes to them from their inside, from their inner resources. So any movement is absolutely possible. So let me explain to you how this might actually work in a dance therapy session. So I'm going to spend a little time explaining group work, because in group work is most, pre most prevalently used within psychiatric hospitals. And group work often has three parts of a session. And the session then will have a warm-up, will have a development, and will have a closure. In the warm-up of the session, often we are in a circle. And we start in a circle because a circle is egalitarian. Everybody is seen in the same way. The therapist and the clients are all together, and they are equal. In this orient part of the orientation part, there, a dance therapist will often put on some music, and the music will have a steady beat because rhythm binds us, and rhythm is a connector. And the rhythm then will be taken on by the clients. Some clients, if they hear a very steady beat, will be moving very slowly, because rhythm actually is infectious. More sort of outwardly excited clients might have a very, very steady beat, but it will bring along those who are a little bit more reluctant. So we have rhythmic connection, we have bodily action, we're looking around, we're seeing who's here, we're saying hello and good morning. The more we move, the more our bodies are stimulated, the more our energy is moving, the more our emotions can flow. That spills into what we call the development section of the session. And in the development section, there's room for exploration. The explorations are all about taking risks and finding out how I can really go more deeply into how I'm feeling. This risk-taking can sometimes be the conscious mind, but sometimes the unconscious comes through. And we talk about that in terms of the symbolic being revealed. There are, there are clients who sometimes don't really know how angry they are, but they're walking around and they're clenching their fists. Their unconscious is coming through. Or they may be somebody who's really excited about what's going on in their lives and they're really, they're, their treatment is moving in the way that they want it to. They can't talk about it, but they're revealing through the shape of their body, through the rhythm of their body a deeper connection. This is, so the symbolic is a very important aspect of the dance therapy session because it helps us bring up what's going on inside. This then moves into the closure portion of the, segment, of, of the dance therapy session. In closure, we are literally saying goodbye. We're beginning to look at what's gone on in the session. It's an ending, it's a separation, it's a time where we take what we've experienced in the session and we move it out into our lives. And the, and the client um, and the therapist are really looking at each other and saying, what happened here? How can I take something that, that I learned here and move it into the rest of my life? So risks are taken, closure happens, and the dance therapist will often invite the clients to perhaps provide a gesture, or perhaps ask a client, how would you like to end the session? So if something happens, we often, at also at the end of the session, go back into a circle formation. Sometimes we hold hands. Sometimes we bow. Sometimes we talk. Sometimes we just look at each other and smile. But it's a way of separating. So what we have are these three parts of a session that provide opportunity 
for awakening expression, awakening our vitality, awakening us to the possibilities of the connection between our emotions, our minds, our bodies, and our social feeling. So as you ponder what I've said about what is dance therapy, I'd like to leave you with something about the session. The dance therapy session is the choreography of the emotions in the service of the clients. I'd also like to leave you with something about what the dance therapist does. And I'd like to say that the spark of life started with a movement. And dance therapists use those sparks to ignite feelings in those whose lives have dimmed. Thank you.